Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today is something interesting, and that is a side-by-side -side comparison of the 2024 Lexus TX350 Luxury and the 2024 Hyundai Palisade Calligraphy. Now, if you know anything about either of these models, then you'll know that these are the most fully equipped, fully loaded in each respective model lineup. Of course, the Lexus does offer the uh, 500 as well as the 450 Plus, which are hybrid and plug-in hybrid powertrains. Uh, but I think the 350 actually is the most relevant and closest in comparison to that of the Hyundai Hyundai Palisade, which of course only comes with the 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6. So even though it's a turbo four banger in a naturally aspirated V6, the power output levels are actually very, very similar. Uh, but one thing that's not so similar is the price point. Yes, there's about a $15,000 price differential as seen between these two vehicles behind me. And believe it or not, the options and features and amenities are much closer than one would assume uh, given that price differential. But of course, one is technically a luxury brand vehicle and the other one is a semi-premium mainstream, if you will. Uh, very nice for the money in that regards. But uh, this may be an interesting comparison for those that might be shopping for a midsize three-row crossover out there. Just give you my overall perspective, feel behind the wheel, sitting in each and every seating position. And we'll be taking each of these vehicles for a test drive quickly on my normal route, just to give you my driving impressions. Because yes, they are going to be very similar in overall size, but they probably drive quite differently, uh, not only due to the engine and powertrain setup, but also just the uh, brands and the platforms themselves. So uh, there's going to be a lot of information here in this video, but this is going to be more of a high level overview. Of course, if you want to know e about each of these vehicles behind me, I will have dedicated separate videos, so make sure you go check those out. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at each of these two side by side behind me, sit inside, get a feel for what each one has to offer, and then take them for a quick spin. Now, before we get too much farther in this video, I do want to mention that this Lexus TX in particular is technically a pre-production spec. So there might be a slight material difference, build quality things, stuff like that, that you might notice throughout this video. Although I haven't in person, it's a very nicely done pre-production spec. So I do keep that in mind while watching this video, but I did want to point that out before we got started. Now, anyways, on my left, I have a 2024 Hyundai Palisade Calligraphy uh, with the steel graphite exterior and the black Napa leather interior. Now on my right, I have the 2024 Lexus TX in its fully loaded luxury trim level with both of the optional or main equipment groups. And then this one has all the sub options as well. Finished in the cloudburst gray exterior with the peppercorn leather interior. Of course, they will come both with full LED lighting at the front of the vehicle. So LED projector headlights, running lights, and turn signals. There are gonna be fog lights over here on the Lexus that are not found over here on the Palisade. But as you can see, the headlamp assembly is much lower on the Palisade than it is in the TX. Uh, and that is part of the reason why you'll find different lighting setups in that regard. Now, front and rear parking sensors, 360 surround view camera systems, uh, both of the respective uh, safety sense technologies on each of these. So they have uh, smart cruise control, lane keeping assist, etc are both gonna be found across the board um, on each of these two. So he's starting over here on the Palisade. You can see there's gonna be a lot of nice satin chrome accents on the interior, and that is part of the calligraphy trim level and what separates it apart versus the lesser trims. Along with that, you get unique 20 inch alloy wheels with a machine gunmetal finish. You get the paint match trim on the exterior, which once again, gives it a nice more premium vibe in my opinion. And then over here on the Lexus, you'll see you won't find as much bright chrome or satin chrome trim. It's mainly body color as far as the big waterfall type of grill at the front end, but there is just a tasteful amount of that chrome uh, that connects the two headlamps together uh, and that really brightens up the front end with those LED headlamps that are currently illuminated. Now I do wanna quickly run down the sides of the vehicle. The Palisade is gonna be just under 197 inches long, which is roughly six inches less than the Lexus TX. So a little bit shorter vehicle as a whole. Not that it makes a huge amount of difference, but there is gonna be some space differences on the inside. Uh, which I will touch on, of course, with leg room and stuff like that. Of course, you do have the LED uh, body color mirror caps. They are gonna be all three auto dimming mirrors on this one. So that is actually something that you will not find on Lexus. You only get two auto dimming mirrors. Uh, you get the puddle lights, you get the 360 cameras on the bottom, stuff like that. Nice satin chrome accents with, of course, Hyundai Digital Key 2.0, uh, which is Hyundai's latest uh, digital key technology. Uh, out back, the LED lighting continues on. The calligraphy gets the nice LED accents when the running lights or headlights are enabled uh, that will illuminate this silver portion right there on the inside of the headlights. 
and then your reverse lights are found uh, on the middle of the bumper. And as you can see, a lot more chrome accent out back and just around the entire vehicle uh, that you will not find over there on that particular Lexus TX. Now, one thing I do want to point out at the back of the Palisade is you do get the digital interior rear view mirror. The camera is located up here in the spoiler and you get the premium LED brake light that runs pretty much the entire width of that spoiler up top uh, that is different versus some of the lesser trim Palisades. Now coming over here to the Lexus TX, this one is optioned with the optional 22 inch alloy wheels finished in a nice uh, darker gunmetal finish. So uh, normally 20 inch would be standard equipment, but this one does have the upgraded uh, 22s. And you can see side by side between the two wheel designs, you really see the size differential and just how much larger they are on the Lexus. But I still think even with the standard 20 inch wheels, which would be an even comparison, uh, either wheel choice is gonna be very good over here on the TX. Now you still get the same body color cladding here on this particular vehicle. So that is gonna be the same, uh, but you can really see on the side profile, the use of bright chrome accent trim is really limited to the top portion above the windows. And then you do get the uh, side roof rails up top are finished in a brighter accent, but overall a lot more uh, body color or gloss black accents on this particular vehicle. There's the LED integration. Of course, you get the cameras on the bottom for the surround view camera system. Like I mentioned, this mirror is not gonna be dimming, but the driver side and interior are gonna be di dimming. And then both vehicles of course have the blind spot detection. You get keyless proximity access on all four door handles over here on the Lexus. You only get it on the front two door handles over there on the Palace something that Hyundai has just done over the years. And then finally coming out back, you do have all of the LED lighting with the nice bold Lexus spelled out in the center of that strip there, some nice gloss black plastics. What's interesting here is on the TX, even in this fully loaded one, you still get a little bit of matte black plastic here on the rear bumper, uh, which might not be expected on a vehicle like this. But once again, this could be something to do with the pre-production spec of this particular one. That might be a slightly different material depending on which uh, TX you purchase, of course, in these full production uh, specifications, but all the same parking sensors and such out back of this vehicle. And then there is going to be the digital camera mirror that is actually located inside the glass instead of outside like the Hyundai. Uh, it keeps the camera a little bit more protected, hopefully keeps it a little bit cleaner, although uh, chances of this window getting dirty are pretty high as well. So uh, a little bit safer, I guess, having it on the inside of the glass. And then you have, of course, uh, the rear wiper mounted on the glass itself. But as a whole, that's just a quick look at the exterior. Both the vehicles look extremely nice. Once again, this is about 203 inches long in total length, and that one's just under 197. So about six inches of overall length difference between each of them. So starting out here in the driver's seat of the Hyundai Palisade. Immediately, the seat is all the way down in its lowest position and is in my rough approximate driving position as well. I've kind of set each of these vehicles up in preparation for the test drive portion. Now, anyways, getting in this vehicle versus the Lexus, one thing you're going to notice is that it feels like you're sitting a little bit higher up. Uh, that is based upon the armrest on the door in the center console. It's also based upon, I guess, the architecture and design, uh, given that these are technically both front wheel drive based platforms, although I will say the all wheel drive system in the Lexus, not only in the gas, but also the hybrid variants, uh, might be a little bit uh, different of a setup and how they tuned it and stuff like that. So uh, do keep that in mind, but a little bit more upright, higher seating position. Of course, you do have all the power adjustments here on the driver's side. One thing that you do get here on the Palisade for the driver's seat is the Ergomotion massaging seat. So that's something you can't get over there on the Lexus TX350. You get the power side bolsters as well. That will tighten and kind of hug you a little bit more if you would like. And then you do get the power leg extension, uh, which both front seats over there on the Lexus have and only the driver's seat here on the Palisade has. In terms of technology, you get dual 12.3 inch digital cluster as well as the infotainment system. Now it is set up in a little bit of a separated fashion uh, with a nice gloss black bezel, nice Napa leather materials all throughout the cabin in the Palisade. It is really quite impressive what they've been able to do at the low $50,000 price point, including all wheel drive in the Palisade. I mean, the amount of bang for the buck is just kind of off the charts in this particular vehicle. And that's part of why it has been so popular. Uh, you do get the paddle shifters, you know, of course, heated and ventilated first and second row seats in both vehicles heated steering wheel, of course, tri-zone automatic climb control. You get that digital rear view camera mirror with garage home link, uh, like I mentioned on both, and you get a nice suede Alcantara type headliner here in the Palisade, uh, where it is a little bit different over there in the Lexus. But 
nonetheless, I mean, this is a very, very nice interior. I will just say in terms of uh, dimensions, it doesn't feel cramped at all here. It just feels like I'm sitting up a little bit higher, uh, which personally I would like to lower the seat or sit, feel like you're sitting a little bit lower, more within the vehicle rather than slightly on top of it. So stepping inside the second row of the Hyundai Palisade, the step in height and the overall comfort uh, is actually very, very good. You step in, you feel like you're sitting just a little bit higher than that of the front seats. Uh, but as you can see with the seat all the way backward in a comfortable seating position behind myself, I have just an immense amount of legroom, like eight inches, heated and ventilated seats. There's the automatic climate control. You get a 150 watt regular wall outlet and USB-C charging along with 12 volts. You get the side shades on the windows. Of course, you have the nice uh, fixed pane of glass above the second and third row occupants. Uh, you know, caps and shares is only the configuration available in the calligraphy, so uh, pretty much the same configuration, although this is technically a seven passenger seating because you have three in the third row, where that's gonna be a six passenger if you do opt for the captain shares with the heated and ventilated functionality. So even though the amount of room is pretty much the same, technically you can fit one more person in the third row here in the Palisade. Uh, but the, you know, the adjustments here on the side of the seat is nice. You have the manual recline. Of course, the seats do slide forward and backward with tons of travel. Uh, so you can pretty much get comfortable in the second or third row, depending on who's sitting behind you. Now, what's nice about both of these two as they are equipped is they both come with power folding up down third row seats. Now, the controls are both going to be located generally right inside the door. You do have to reach a little bit farther for the Palisade. Uh, but you can see they're located right in an easy position. This allows you to fold both uh, all the way down as well as back from here, which is very nice. Uh, of course, you do get the three-stage heated third row seats, which is not something you find in the Lexus. But stepping inside and then setting the seat all the way back, it does come to a slightly more forward position and stops, which is good, so then you don't crush your legs. And as you can see, even behind you know a pretty comfortable five foot nine seating position for the second row occupant, I have about one inch of leg room behind the seat back. Foot room is actually a little bit on the tighter side, but I do have enough room to foot my feet uh, both underneath the seat fairly comfortably. And then I do have all the power adjustments to recline the third row to my liking over here. And then you get the heated seat functionality, which is a, a very nice high end, something you don't really see and uh, many vehicles, and then there's your USB-C charging. Uh, plastic here on the armrest, not a huge deal, but it would be nice to have a little bit of a padded section there. Of course, you got the nice suede Alcantara headliner, vents up top, um, and everything like that. But the only gripe I really have back here is the fact that the knees uh, stick up a little bit because the seat bottom is mounted a little bit lower inside the vehicle, uh, which does net you a little bit of additional headroom inside here. Uh, I would say I have at least you know two inches of headroom uh, depending on how the seat is reclined, uh, but my knees are sticking up a little bit higher at a steeper angle. Uh, but still, regardless, a very comfortable place to be. But I think once we step into the third row of the Lexus TX, that's where the biggest difference is gonna be in terms of comfort. So stepping inside the driver's seat of the Lexus TX. Um, one thing I'll say immediately is the seats feel a little bit softer, have a nicer material, two-tone kind of, I assume high-end leather with the suede accents on the bolsters on the bottom and the top. Uh, but the seats themselves feel just a little bit more plush and luxurious. The uh, armrests here on the door panel as well as the center console feel like they're up higher. So it's a more comfortable seating position. Once again, the seat is all the way down as that's typically how I like to drive many vehicles I'm in. Uh, the steering wheel is still a very nice, you know, leather wrap design. Of course, you have all the traditional Lexus controls inside here. So it's very familiar for anybody uh, that has been in a newer Lexus product. You still have the nice large digital gauge cluster and the large uh, infotainment system with your integrated dual zone climate controls for the front seat. And of course you have the climate controls out back. Uh, but you know, really, I just say, think this is a slightly uh, more comfortable place to be, not in terms of the space that's available because that's very good in either of these two, but simply because I would say the seating position with the armrests on the two uh, doors as well as the center console is in a much better position for my seating uh, comfort. So stepping in behind my driving position here in the Lexus TX. Now, once again, you step in the second row, you feel like you're sitting up just a little bit taller than that of the front row, which is fine. It's normal stage seating effect. You have your nice recline lever here on the left side of the seat, very similar amounts of recline and adjustments. And then you have additional functionality for folding the seat and uh, adjustments down at the bottom. Now, of course, if you wanna slide it back and forth, you simply pull uh, the lever and that allows you a good range of motion, very similar to that of the Palisade actually. 
Still have the side window manual sunshades. Uh, you do have lock and unlock buttons in the second row doors here, which is uh, typically something you see on higher end of vehicles. So not to be unexpected there. Heated and ventilated second row seats, which is very nice with your tri-zone automatic climate control, USB-C charging, no 120 volt wall outlet here in the second row, uh, which is just an omission versus the Palisade. Uh, you do have a integrated and removable center console with cup holders here on the six passenger configuration. So you simply pull this lever here at the front of the console. The entire thing will slide out and give you basically this portion right here. Uh, it's normally just all open over there in the Palisade. So this is just an additional accessory. You can keep it inside the vehicle if you want, easily remove it if you don't, and it slides easily back into place, uh, which is actually a very neat design. Now the sunroof here in the TX is basically a normal panoramic type. It's not two pieces of glass that are split between a break in the actual glass. So uh, you do get uh, more light, I would say, here inside of the cabin, which is, you know, uh, just due to the design, uh, but might not be quite as rigid in terms of the roof because you don't have as much support between the two pieces of glass. Yeah, in terms of comfort, I would say they're very similar. Once again, the same uh, reasoning that I like the front seats pertains to the back. The seats just feel a little bit more plush and comfortable, uh, but really I wouldn't mind going on a long road trip in either of these two vehicles. So what's nice on both of these is you get the same uh, power release tilt and slide functionality, so gain easier access. I think the opening here on this vehicle is just a little bit uh, wider, and you do get a nice step that is down below, uh, inset several inches, so you can kind of use this as a step and go right into the third row if you wish. But uh, ingress and egress in either, I don't think is a huge deal for most. And we'll go ahead and step into the third row here. Yep, very easy, good amount of headroom. And then pulling the seat back, you can see it actually stops way far forward. So I'm gonna have to go up there and adjust that seat because that is not a comfortable position for most people. And immediately, yes, this is a very, very nice to, place to be for a third row vehicle. You can see I have at least two or three inches of leg room, a little bit more foot room down below. Uh, but the biggest thing in terms of comfort is not only the headroom that I have, because this is a very similar amount of headroom, about you know one to two inches of headroom, is going to be just how high the seat bottom is off of the floor and my legs are not nearly at a steep angle in any uncomfortable fashion. So that is really the highlight of the Grand Highlander in the Lexus TX and how they designed it. A very, very usable third row for not only children or you know smaller people, but average full-size adults. So yeah, very, very nice. In terms of controls and amenities, uh, there's your power adjustments for the recline of the third row seat back. So once again, nearly identical to the Palisade USB-C charging. We get a nice leather padded armrest for third row occupants. So uh, just like I said, I wanted that in the Palisade. It is found here in the TX. There's your AC vents and LED lighting up there. Of course, nice large third row windows. You can actually look out the side and see you have a lot of visibility. Uh, so that's a little bit of a benefit there. And uh, really that's gonna be it. You do get only two seats here in the third row. So you can't fit three people across, which uh, is fine because it gives you more space for each seating position. There's cargo tie down hooks for when the seats are folded down. And yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of the uh, third row of the TX. No heated seats back here, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate, but uh, comfort is going to be a little bit better and I would say materials are gonna be better as well. Okay, so setting out here in the 2024 Lexus TX. I want to start out with this one because I've been driving it over the last several days, so I am a little bit more familiar with the vehicle. And it also has the four cylinder powertrain. I thought that would be an interesting uh, comparison. Now this vehicle puts out 275 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque via a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder. Now this is actually very similar, similar power outputs to that of the 2.5 liter turbo from Hyundai, although that engine is not found in the Palisade as of yet. I do expect that maybe to make an appearance in the future. Now let's go ahead and do an acceleration run. And you know, contrary to the four cylinder, you know, powertrain, it actually gets up and goes for its size, not bad. I would certainly say it's adequate for a vehicle like this uh, due to its power outputs and being a turbocharged engine. Uh, it's certainly not abundant in power like the uh, hybrid powertrain available in the TX and also, you know, the sister vehicle, the Grand Highlander. Transmission's pretty eager to downshift and, you know, builds power and uh, overall torque quite well. So. 
I have really no complaints with the power output in this engine. Um, but you know, overall the vehicle itself, you know, just looking at the driving dynamics, you sit up quite high, you know, like a traditional mid-size larger SUV such as these two vehicles. So you have a very commanding viewpoint of the roadway. Visibility is extremely good. Super large side mirrors on either side of the vehicle. The rear digital camera mirror or just the regular mirror if you do flip it down has good visibility as well. No complaints out the uh, rear. You can always put down the headrests in the third row to make visibility just that much better. And of course, over the front of the vehicle, not an issue either. Now, I guess touching on some of the other driving dynamics in terms of you know the comfort, suspension, ride quality, everything like that. Uh, even with these 22 inch alloy wheels that are once again optional on this vehicle, it rides extremely nice. There's really no complaints. It rides like a luxury SUV such as this should. Uh, very soft, very compliant. I will say uh, it's a little bit on the softer side of things when it comes to you know the handling dynamics. So you do get some body roll and body lean when going around tighter corners or driving this vehicle in any sort of um, you know spirited manner, if you will. The interior, I think, is really one of the aspects that shines in my eyes. Uh, just due to not only the comfort of the seating surfaces, you know, the leather materials used throughout the cabin, uh, but I think the ergonomics of the TX is very good. In terms of MPG, what I've been averaging over the last uh, about four days with the Lexus TX, it's been right about 19 or 20 MPG and mostly city type of driving, a little bit of combined driving, uh, but certainly about, you know, give or take 19 to 20 MPG according to the vehicle itself. Now, the one negative I've experienced here driving the Lexus TX um, in terms of a lot of the interior technology uh, is the eye tracking device here just behind the steering wheel. Uh, this system is extremely sensitive to you know, changes in whether or not can actually see your face or if you're distracted behind the wheel using the infotainment system, maybe just looking out the side window, et cetera, uh, or even driving with your hand at the top of the steering wheel, blocking your face uh, from that eye tracker or face monitoring system. It pops up right there, sit up, driver face not detected. That has to be one of the biggest nitpicks I have with this vehicle is just how sensitive and how, I guess, annoying in some regards that message pops up onto the dashboard. Now, luckily, I believe you can disable this from notifying you on the dashboard, uh, but there's instances where I'm simply driving down the road, sitting in my normal seating position just like this, looking straight forward, and it'll pop up on the center uh, the screen here that says, I can't see your face. You know, it says, sit up. Uh, face not detected. I think that is simply, well, for one, it shouldn't detect that or say that if you're you know, using a normal driving position like this, uh, but it's just quite annoying how frequently and how sensitive the system is. Now, after sitting at that light, it reminded me here on the digital cluster, one thing I really do like about the Lexus TX is the engine stop start system and how they have it programmed. Now, believe it or not, I've actually not shut off the engine stop start system one time while driving this vehicle, and that's because uh, when you're sitting at a stop sign or a stoplight, a message will come up on the digital cluster saying, depress brake pedal more firmly to activate the engine stop function. So under normal braking pressure, sitting at a light, the engine won't shut off. But if you go just a little bit farther and press the brake pedal a little bit harder, it'll actually turn on the engine stop start system, shut down the engine, and as soon as you start to release the brake pedal, of course, it kicks back in really quickly and uh, you're, you'll be on your way. It's a very interesting implementation of the system, one that I've not experienced from a different or other manufacturer. So I applaud Toyota and Lexus for programming it like that because Typically, I wouldn't want the engine to shut off on, you know, at a normal stoplight because uh, really you're not sitting there for all that long. But say you're in a fast food drive through or sitting at a light that you know is uh, going to take a little bit longer. Well, you simply put your foot on the brake a little bit, you know, firmer and it'll sit there with the engine off. And of course, until the system detects, it needs to turn the engine back on for HVAC reasons. It just really seems to work very well. And um, I like the way they've implemented the stop start system. I'm not sure I've ever said that before, uh, but it works great in the TX. Now merging on here to the interstate, hustling it around this corner here just over 60 miles an hour. Very nice handling. And merging power, as you can see, I didn't get above about 3,500 RPMs doing that acceleration up to 75 miles an hour. Now activating the cruise control technology. Now we have the lane tracing assist function on. 
as well as the adaptive cruise control. I have to say Toyota and Lexus uh, systems work very well. It, do, it does remind you to keep your hands on the wheel and of course it is monitoring your face and eyes via that sensor uh, to make sure that you are paying attention and not too distracted. And I actually between the Palisade and this vehicle, I think both systems are pretty much dead even in their uh, consistency out on the roadway, detecting the roadway lines. Uh, you know, actually assisting you while driving down the roadway. I think they're both pretty much dead even in my opinion uh, for just how well they work in real world situations. Never had a major issue with either one of them. Now, one thing I'll easily hand it to again in the Lexus is the premium audio system. Now this one has the upgraded Mark Levinson 21 speaker system. I'm not exactly sure the output um, in terms of, you know, wattage behind the speakers. Uh, but the Mark Levinson systems in any Lexus vehicle I've been in is absolutely fantastic, has a ton of punch, ton of low end, uh, just sounds awesome. And uh, that's something that I think Hyundai really needs to work on over the next uh, certainly generation of vehicle is simply uh, making their premium audio system, typically a Bose or a Harman Kardon system, just sound a little bit better. Yes, is it adequate for most drivers out there in that price point? Probably, but I think it still lacks behind even some of the uh, upgraded premium systems from some of the other mainstream brands. So that's my recommendation. Hopefully Hyundai uh, takes that advice over you know the next couple model years or just as these vehicles are revised for the next generation. Upgrades them just a little bit more uh, than is what is currently offered. And finally, one last thing I wanna touch on here in the TX before we switch into the Palisade is uh, given the slightly longer length inside of this vehicle, I did have an eight foot long, an eight by 10 inch board inside of the interior of this vehicle and it came just barely beyond the front row seat. So it did come onto the center console just barely by a couple inches, um, although it might not have slid back all the way to the plastic uh, tailgate trim. But regardless, this vehicle swallowed up an eight foot long board really, really easily. And uh, I think the Palisade would accommodate that as well. Uh, but depending on the interior dimensions of the two vehicles, I think the TX might have just a little bit more room behind the first row seats all the way back to the tailgate trim itself. Now, I'm not 100% on that, but I would guess that based on the overall physical length of this vehicle and uh, some of the interior dimensions Toyota and Lexus have quoted. Okay, so setting out here in the 2024 Palisade Calligraphy, uh, immediately behind the wheel, you can feel the naturally aspirated V6 powertrain that underpins this vehicle. Now it puts out 291 horsepower, which is several more horsepower than that of the 2.4 liter turbo, uh, but at 262 pound-feet of torque, which is substantially less than that of the turbocharged, you know, 317 found in the TX. So now we're going to do an acceleration test here with the V6 and see how it does. So yeah, definitely some interesting power delivery, or not interesting, but you know, to be expected, but different delivery. So you can really feel the naturally aspirated V6 likes to wind out you know, to its red line of you know, what, 6,500 RPM or so, and it really starts to get into its power band above 5,000 RPM. I don't think there felt like a big discrepancy or difference in the actual like zero to 60 time, for example. I'll have to put those numbers up on the screen for you guys just to see if there is a larger difference in the actual zero to 60 than I felt behind the wheel. Uh, but anyways, going around, you know, the first part of this test drive here, wind noise, overall cabin interior volume levels, maybe just a touch louder here in the Palisade versus that of the Lexus. In terms of interior ergonomics, you guys know I filmed a bunch of videos here on this generation of Palisade, and I really, really do enjoy it for the price point that it comes in at. You know, you have the dual 12.3 inch digital cluster and infotainment system. This does not have Hyundai's latest UI, uh, so unfortunately it does not have the latest CCNC uh, system here. Uh, but still, this is a very robust, easy to use, uh, very intuitive, well laid out system. I have really no major complaints with it, other than the fact it does not support wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I think that is by far the biggest drawback of this older Hyundai system. Uh, but you know, the materials throughout the cabin looks very nice. 
In terms of visibility, I still feel like I sit up a little bit higher here in the Palisade. You have just a little bit more commanding viewpoint of the roadway, even with a seat all the way in its lowest position, which is a little bit interesting to me. Uh, I would prefer the seat to go a little bit lower, but the side mirrors are actually a very similar size, nice and large, great visibility. Uh, you have the digital camera mirror as well as the you know auto dimming functionality out of all three mirrors, which is not something the Lexus has. It only has these two as auto dimming. That third one is truly a uh, great feature to have if you've ever been or driven a vehicle at night. Uh, with all three dimming mirrors. You're never blinded, which is awesome. Now, in terms of interior materials, uh, you do see a little bit of this price point showing through uh, versus that Lexus, which is subst substantially more money. Uh, but still, these there's a lot of soft touch materials here on the inside, but I would say maybe the quality of the leather used on things like the dashboard, the center console, the door armrest is maybe just a little bit lower. Now, the snap of leather seats as well as the steering wheel is really the touch points that Hyundai uh, went high end on. And you can feel their very similar plushness and softness to that of the Lexus. And of course you get the nice suede headliner, uh, which to me looks actually a little bit more premium than that of the TX I was just in. Now, the one thing that I can enjoy here on this test drive is the Ergo Motion driver's seat. Yes, this Palisade Calligraphy has a massaging driver's seat. Uh, with an easy use button on the side and you can actually cycle between three different massage settings, pelvic, lumbar, and whole body massage. Why don't we just leave it on the whole body? You know, why not for the uh, duration of this test drive? But that's actually not found in the Lexus that I was just in for, you know, $15,000 more. So a little bit interesting to see there that you're getting a handful of more features here in the Palisade. Certainly a nice feature to have on those longer distance road trips. Now I will say the one ergonomics interior bit that I actually like more than that of the Lexus here in the Palisade is the way the center console houses your HVAC controls and your heated and cooled seats. Now that's always prominent and easily accessible on the Lexus TX, uh, but it's actually just a little bit closer to my driving position. And within arm's reach here in the Palisade, you still get these small uh, capacitive touchscreen display for some of the climate controls. Otherwise, you use the buttons and knobs that surrounds the screen, and then the uh, heated and ventilated seats, as, long, as well as the heated steering wheel, are used with separate dedicated buttons that are located extremely close uh, to the driver's position. So, I do like that just a little bit more than the Lexus, but I think the uh, overall look and dashboard feel with the Lexus looks just a little bit more premium and minimalistic because you have less physical buttons uh, to kind of run through here next to the driver. Now I mentioned this I think a little bit earlier on in this video, uh, but here with the Palisade, the center armrest feels like it's just too low for me. Not exactly sure why that is, uh, but my arm feels like it's just at the borderline of being uh, uncomfortable because of uh, how far down I have to set my elbow. If this center armrest was about you know half an inch, three quarters of an inch, an inch higher, I think I'd be much more comfortable inside of the interior of this vehicle. Uh, but for some reason, that's just the way I'm getting you know the feel of this is on the interior. The, the door armrest is actually marginally better, and I don't have as much issue. But here with the center console armrest, uh, that's just something I notice here on the interior, especially hopping out of these vehicles back to back. Yeah, I certainly do like the sound of that V6 a little bit more. Similar speeds here. Yeah, I mean, it, it handles really well for what it is, right around 60 miles an hour and already up to speed. So, I don't know. I'd say behind the wheel, it feels like the Palisade might be just a little bit more effortless feeling or take less throttle to get to the desired speed that you're targeting. Now, let's go ahead and activate Highway Drive Assist 2.0. So, activate Cruise Control, Lane Fall Assist, and boom, instantly the HDA logo comes up here on the center digital cluster. I have no major complaints with Hyundai's Highway Drive Assist technology. Basically, it combines the built-in navigation, lane follow assist, some of the other technologies, and uh, lets you drive down the interstate uh, with relative ease. It's really not a super naggy system as a whole. It does also have automated lane changes. So basically, you turn on the uh, turn signal indicator here, you bump the steering wheel, 
vehicle makes sure you're safe here in the other lane to change lanes and will pretty much automatically do it for you. So I guess while I'm waiting on this train to pass, um, I guess that brings us to the end of this video and which vehicle I would recommend. Now, I don't think it's fair to say that one is a better value or better deal than the other because they do compete in two separate different classes. One's more of a premium luxury vehicle and the other one's more of a premium mainstream brand, if you will. But I do wanna bring up the price points for both of these vehicles because I think that is certainly very relevant and something to consider. So the price point of the Lexus TX that I featured in this video is right around $70,000 MSRP. Now that is a pre-production model. It didn't have a final window sticker uh, to actually show you guys, but it is gonna be right at $70,000. You go and build and price that tool right now on Lexus's uh, website. Now coming over here to this Palisade I'm in, it's just over $54,000, including all wheel drive and destination. So doing a little bit of quick math there, it's basically $15,000 of an MSRP price difference between a Lexus TX fully loaded luxury all wheel drive and the calligraphy that I'm in right now. So I guess that brings me to um, whether or not which one you guys would pick if you were in the market for a three row midsize vehicle. I think the pros of the Lexus is going to be the interior volume in all three rows is substantially better than that, um, at least in the third row versus the Palisade that I'm currently driving. Now, feature-wise, the Palisade in some regards might be the better pick because it might have things that the Lexus simply does not, and vice versa. The Lexus might have a couple of things that this Palisade does not. Now, I will say, I think the Palisade does have uh, more of that than the Lexus. You know, you get things like the uh, power release uh, up-down feature for not only the third row, but you have the power release second row buttons found in the cargo area. The Lexus does not have that. You get heated third row seats, which again, the Lexus does not. You get the ergo motion driver seat here, which I'm currently using still. Unfortunately, the Lexus doesn't have that either. So I think you'd have to run down all of the features and options, see what each one offers and decide uh, whether or not you can live without, you know, a handful of things that the Lexus is missing. It's still gonna be an extremely well-equipped vehicle. Uh, don't get me wrong for the price point in the segment that it competes in. Uh, but I think the Palisade, again, punches above the category just a little bit and what they were able to pack inside this vehicle for the low to mid $50,000 price point. So I think I'm just going to leave it at that. You know, I think they both drive extremely well. They both, you know, are going to fit a family of two or three with relative ease, again, depending on how much space and everything you want in that third row. Um, but yeah, you know, $15,000 is a lot of money at the end of the day. So uh, that's a good chunk of change. Could be a down payment on a house, depending on you know what price point of house and everything like that. Um, so yeah, you have to let me know down in the comment section below which one you are leaning towards. I highly encourage you guys to take a look at both, or again, consider the Toyota Grand Highlander versus the Palisade for slightly less money than the Lexus TX. Uh, so that would be more of an even comparison in terms of MSRPs and price points. Um, but again, they are slightly different vehicles and not only the way they drive, the powertrains that they offer, uh, but also some of the interior volume and aspects in that regard. So leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and or found it helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. It greatly helps out the channel's videos. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I wanna give a huge thanks to Lexus for providing the TX350 seen in today's video, as well as Green Family Hyundai for providing the Palisade that I'm currently driving. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. As always, I appreciate the support. I highly encourage you guys to check out some other content I have, not only on the Palisade, but also the Lexus here on the channel over the next week or so. And uh, as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.